You should stop investing in NFTs, maybe. Depending on your financial situation, buying NFTs right now may not be the best strategy for you, which I'll explain. Today, we'll discuss three reasons why you shouldn't be buying NFTs. We'll talk about a potential recession, and I'll give you the best strategy so you can keep buying NFTs even throughout a recession. Because my ultimate goal for you and everyone else watching my channel is to be as well educated about NFTs as possible so you can make the most informed and the best decisions for your financial future. My name is Devin Cook. Buckle up and stick around for the hardware wallet giveaway later on in this video and welcome back to dev money and real quickly i am not a financial advisor this is not financial advice this is just youtube and this is for entertainment purposes only and my goal for this video is not to spread fud by telling you not to be buying nfts but instead my goal is to protect as many people as possible from making decisions that could end up being detrimental to their financial health so first up why should you stop buying nfts well great question glad you asked which i'm assuming you did because you clicked on this video right there are three reasons why you shouldn't be buying nfts right now and each reason has to do with your current level of financial preparedness. The first reason you shouldn't be buying NFTs is if you do not have a reliable income. We all should know by now that investing in NFTs is very risky and probably one of the most risky assets that you can purchase. There's very minimal regulation and rug pulls happen on almost a daily basis, which can be really scary. So if you don't have a reliable income, it may not be in your best interest to be buying something as risky as NFTs because there's a high chance that that money could go to zero. And this is especially true if you think you're gonna need that money that you've just put into NFTs in the short term. Regardless of your strategy, buying NFTs when you don't have a reliable income could be exposing you to way more risk than you should really be tolerating. And I know it can be really tempting and look like easy money to just buy a couple of NFTs and then watch your money 10X, but it's also just as easy, if not easier, to buy NFTs and then watch that money go to zero. So you have to be careful. And the second reason you should not be buying NFTs right now is if you don't have a good amount of savings in the situation where you lose a job or we enter a recession. And if you're unsure how much you need to have set aside for savings, usually three to six months of your living expenses is adequate for most situations. And your own personal level of risk tolerance is gonna determine whether you lean towards three months or more towards six months or even more. But I would not recommend having anywhere less than three months of your living expenses set aside because I think that's a pretty good bare minimum. And I know that having a bunch of money set aside in a savings account, doing nothing, not making money, and in fact, losing money to inflation is just irritating. Trust me, I know. But I know at least personally, I sleep better at night knowing that I have some money set aside in case some emergency were to come up and I have some money that I can immediately deploy in that situation, whatever it turns out to be. And this is really helpful because we can't predict life and neither you nor I know what's going to happen in the current financial markets. We could be heading straight for a recession and if we do, then that money could prove to be extremely helpful for you in that situation. Or we could just have a few more years of a bull market and that money is just going to be sitting there in a savings account, but at least you know you have it if you need it. And if I was in that situation where I didn't have a savings safety net, I would make that more of a priority than investing in NFTs, just for me personally. Now, the third reason you should think about not investing so much in NFTs is if you're not making other investments as well. Now, I know in the crypto world, it can seem like heresy to say that you should be making other investments besides crypto, which remember, I'm not saying because I'm not giving financial advice, but having money in the stock market and real estate, as well as crypto and NFTs is a great way to diversify your portfolio so all of your eggs aren't in the same basket. If you actually have the majority of your wealth in NFTs, I would really consider if I were you to redistribute some of that money into other investments. And that can be hard right now, especially when NFTs seem like the golden goose that just keeps on giving, but you can also get massive returns from other investment sectors as well. In 2021, the S&P 500 had an ROI of about 27% and some real estate markets saw upwards of 30% appreciation year over year. So perform a little self-assessment for yourself to determine where you stand with each of these. But why does this even matter? Who cares if you have good savings, a good income, or other investments because maybe your NFTs are already taking you halfway to the moon. Well, the reason I'm urging caution is because the markets are not always gonna be up. Not every NFT project sees crazy returns. And in fact, some of them see negative returns. And if you've been watching the stock market lately, you've seen this happening because the stock market has been going up and then sometimes it's been going down and then sometimes it's been going way down and then sometimes it's been trading sideways. But then again, sometimes it goes back up and really it's just been like a gigantic roller coaster. Every since the start of the year, the stock market is down about 7%. And if we continue to trend downwards, we could even enter a recession, which is defined as two periods or two quarters of negative growth. And if this happens, if we actually enter a serious recession, that can be bad news for all investments, including our precious JPEGs. So bear with me for a minute as we deviate from NFTs and talk real quickly about the general financial markets. But I promise I'll be right back to talking about NFTs. One of the biggest indicators right now that we have of a coming recession is the flattening yield curve. And if the yield curve 
curve inverts, that could indicate a coming recession. An inverted yield curve occurs when the two-year treasury rate pays a higher yield than the 10-year treasury, which inverts the curve. And when this occurs, it indicates that investors are seeing more volatility and more risk investing in the short term than they do in the long term, which is why the two-year has a higher yield. And what's really interesting is that an inverted yield curve has correctly signaled nine recessions since 1955, with only one false positive in the 1960s. Right now, we're experiencing a flattening of the curve, which is where the two-year and 10-year treasury yields are basically about the same. So the curve is not yet inverted, but it's much closer to inverting than it has been since 2011, which is why everyone is watching it so closely. And another indicator that we have pointing towards a recession, funny enough, is Google Trends data. Looking at the history for the search term recession on Google shows that it trends upwards ahead of a recession. Now, is this a really accurate indicator to go off of? Well, maybe, maybe not. But what I think is most interesting about this indicator or this data is that it shows what people as a whole are thinking about. And if everyone is collectively thinking that we're going to enter a recession, then chances are we're going to actually enter a recession because everyone is thinking we will. Now, hold on, stay with me, I'll explain. What I'm saying is that if everyone thinks a recession is imminent, they're gonna be tightening up on their budget, they're gonna be saving more, spending less, and overall being more financially cautious. And if a business thinks there's gonna be a recession, they're gonna do the same thing. They'll cut expenses, maybe do some preliminary layoffs, quit hiring, and try to boost their profit margins as much as possible in preparation. And if the majority of a community or a country starts thinking this way and taking these precautions, then I think it's possible that just by taking these actions themselves, this could actually trigger a recession recession if done on a large enough scale. And there are some other indicators of a recession as well, like the rising energy costs in both the form of electricity as well as gas, which I know you're well aware of because gas prices out there are sometimes higher than people's credit scores. But even if we do enter a recession, don't be too concerned, especially if you're well prepared. Ever since the 1940s, we've had 12 recessions and the longest lasted 18 months and the shortest lasted only two months and the average lasted about 10 months. And for me at least, when I look at these numbers and look at the data, it seems a lot less intimidating. So what can you do to best prepare prepare for a recession so you can still be buying NFTs throughout it, which is extremely important because recessions provide great opportunities to buy assets at reduced rates, which everyone wants. It's basically like a sale. But first, let's pick a winner from the Decent Wallet giveaway. All you had to do was post in the comments on the video I made last week about the Decent Wallet. I used a random number picker to choose out of the nine comments and the winning number is number two. Anthony Delarte, you won a Decent Wallet. Thanks very much for commenting. Just comment on this video, let's get in touch and we'll get you that wallet. All right, so here's how you prepare. First, you need to start stacking cash. If you believe there's going to be a recession, then you also believe that we may see a decline in many assets. And the best way to take advantage of that price drop or that Black Friday sale on assets, as I like to call it, is by having cash sitting on the sidelines so you can buy in. For example, think about this. If the floor for the Board Ape Yacht Club went to five Ethereum, but you don't have any money sitting on the sidelines to buy in, then you wouldn't really benefit from that drop in price because you wouldn't have any money to take advantage of it. So make sure you're stacking some cash that you can use to buy into investments that are on sale, as well as to use this money to live off of in case your income is reduced. Second, don't spend any more money than you can afford to lose. And I'm serious about this. It gets thrown a lot, but honestly, take that statement extremely seriously. And this is really powerful in a bear market because what happens if you go buy a cool cat at 10 Ethereum and you say going into the purchase that, yeah, no problem. I'm fine losing all 10 Ethereum. I'm fine if it goes to zero. This is money I can afford to lose. But what happens then when it drops to eight Ethereum and then the floor price drops to six Ethereum and then maybe four Ethereum, then maybe three, then two, then one, then only invest with money that can actually go to zero because then and only then will you have the stomach strong enough to watch that roller coaster go all the way down and then hopefully back up and even higher than before. Which brings us to number three, you need to be prepared for the inevitable temptation to sell your assets when the prices just continue dropping. If you're not prepared psychologically for a bear market, you may have a really tough time holding on to these assets as you're watching the prices plummet. A really common thought to have is this. Well, I'll just sell now because the price is dropping and then I'll buy it in later once the price is finished dropping. Makes perfect sense, I'm a genius. But the problem is this, when is that asset, that NFT project or that crypto, whatever it is, when is it gonna actually finish decreasing in price? And when are you gonna be buying back in? And what if you just buy back in during a dead cat bounce, which is where there's a false recovery followed by a further drop? Once you sell, it's a lot harder to buy back in because of your fear of losing and because you've already conditioned yourself to the possibility of selling. So how do you overcome this? Well, you overcome it by using step number four, which is to remind yourself of the conviction that you had, which caused you to invest in that asset in the first place. And you do this by writing it down somewhere so you can read it and reference it in the future. This is your thesis for the project, or 
where you reason why you believe it's going to perform well in the future. For example, your thesis for the Board Ape Yacht Club, if you're invested or looking to invest, is that they've created the first truly exclusive club and mastermind that can be used to further your business development. They started the entire trend around ape art and are consistently delivering on their roadmap at a high level and they're continuing to develop the roadmap into the future. So if you're holding an ape and the floor drops down to 20 Ethereum and you're thinking about selling because you just can't stand any further losses, well, you can go consult your thesis and see if those things still hold true. If your belief around the future of a project hasn't changed, then don't sell just because the price has changed. However, if you feel like your thesis is not the same and maybe the fundamentals or the creators behind the project have changed, then that can pose a very valid reason for selling. And remember that neither holding nor selling is ever 100% good or bad. It really just depends on the situation. And step number five is to dollar cost average into whatever projects you're wanting to invest in, or you can also DCA into your purchasing crypto of choice, whether it's ETH, Solana, or some other crypto. That way you don't have to be worrying about the ups and downs of the daily market. You can just buy in every month, every day, every paycheck, or whenever you choose to. Just make sure it's consistent. And number six is to create a list of projects and target prices for those projects that you're gonna buy in at. For example, maybe you'll buy vFriends at six Ethereum, Invisible Friends at three Ethereum, and Alien Friends at 0.75 Ethereum. By creating this list ahead of time, you're creating an acquisition plan that you can execute as soon as these projects hit those targets and you don't have to let your emotions get involved. One of the biggest issues with bear markets is that it's really easy to think your way out of buying something when it's on sale because you're worried it's gonna go down even further. And maybe it will, honestly. Maybe you buy a vFriend at six Ethereum and then it continues to drop down to three Ethereum. Or maybe you buy an invisible friend at three Ethereum and then it continues to drop all the way down to one Ethereum. And don't kid yourself thinking that you're gonna perfectly time the bottom of the market. If you happen to do so, honestly, you just got lucky. Do your best to create a purchase plan well in advance so you just have to act rather than think. Let me know your thoughts below guys. And as always, thanks for watching.